today. Thank you so much for joining us for story time here in Miss Adaria's basement. <laughs> kind of looks like a nice room that you'd want to sit in and read a book, doesn't it? Well, today we're going to read two very important books. And one of them is called Freedom Summer. It's written by Deborah Wiles and illustrated by Jerome Lagarugge. Sorry, that's a really hard last name. I hope I pronounced it a little bit right. So whenever you're ready, let's get right into it. Ooh, what's it all about? What's it all about? Freedom Summer. Okay. It's dedicated by Deborah Wiles for the children of the movement and for Butch who believed. So um, let me just read to you what the context of the story is uh, before we get into it. So I'm going to just hold it to myself so I don't have to hold it up. In the early 1960s, the American South had long been a place where black Americans could not drink from the same drinking fountains as white Americans. They couldn't attend the same schools or enjoy the same public areas. Then the Civil Rights Act of 1964 became law and stated that all persons shall be entitled to the full and equal enjoyment of any public place, regardless of race, color, religion, or national origin. It's very important. The author was born a white child in Mobile, Alabama, and she spent her summers visiting her beloved Mississippi relatives. When the Civil Rights Act was passed, the town pool closed. So did the roller rink and the ice cream parlor. Rather than lawfully giving blacks the same rights and freedoms as whites, many Southern businesses chose to shut their doors in protest, and some of them closed forever. Also in the summer of 1964, civil rights workers in Mississippi organized something called Freedom Summer, it was a movement to register black Americans to vote. It was a time of great racial violence and change. That was the summer that she began to pay attention. She noticed that black Americans used back doors, were waited on only after every white person had been helped and were treated poorly, all because of the color of their skin. And no matter what any law said, so nobody really paid attention to the Civil Rights Act. I realized, or she realized rather, that a white person openly having a black friend and vice versa could be a dangerous thing. She couldn't get these thoughts and images out of her mind and she wondered what it must have been like to be a black child of her age. She dreamed about changing things and yet she wondered what any child, black or white, could do. This story grew out of her feelings surrounding that time. It is fiction, but it's based on real events. So now that you have that context in mind, I hope you enjoy the story. So here we go. John Henry Waddell is my best friend. His mama works for my mama, and her name is Annie Mae. Every morning, right at 8 o'clock, Annie Mae steps off the county bus and walks up the long hill to my house. If it's summer, John Henry is step, step, stepping it right beside her. You see the bus? They just came off, and he's waiting for them. Oh, it's going to be one of those page-turning type difficult books, isn't it now? Oh. <laughs> Sorry, my fingers just eh, gong those fingers. We like to help Annie Mae. We shell butter beans. We sweep the front porch. We let the cats in and then chase the cats out of the house until Annie Mae says, Shoo, enough of you two, go play. We shoot marbles in the dirt until we're too hot to be alive. Then we yell, 
Last one is a rotten egg. And run straight for Fiddler's Creek. Ah, oh, the joys of summer. John Henry swims better than anybody I know. He crawls like a catfish, blows bubbles like a swamp monster, uh, but he doesn't swim in the town pool with me because he's not allowed. So we dam the creek with rocks and sticks and make our own swimming pool. Then we holler and jump in wearing only our skin. Ah! That must feel very refreshing. John Henry's skin is the color of browned butter. He smells like pine needles after a good rain. My skin is the color of pale moths that dance around the porch late at night. John Henry says, I smell like a just washed sock. John Henry, oh, and he said, that means war, I shout. We churn the water into a, a big hurricane and laugh until our sides hurt. Then we float on our backs and spout like whales. I'm gonna be a fireman when I grow up, I say. Me too, says John Henry. Oh, I love to swim. I can't wait till we can swim again. <laughs> I have two nickels for ice pops. So we put our clothes in and walk to town. John Henry doesn't come with me through the front door of Mr. Mason's general store because he's not allowed. How you doing, young Joe, asks Mr. Mason. He winks and says, are you gonna eat these all by yourself? My heart does a quick beat. Uh, I got one for a friend, I say, and scoot out the door. Yes, sir, it's mighty hot out there, Mr. Mason calls after me. I love ice pops, says John Henry. Me too, I say. Yep. Annie Mae makes dinner for my family every night. She creams the corn and rolls the biscuits. Daddy stirs his iced tea and says, the town pool opens tomorrow to everyone under the sun, no matter what color. That's the new law, Mama tells me. She helps me, she helps my, ooh, she helps my plate with peas. Maybe they mean heaps, I don't know. Uh, she helps my plate with peas. Because <laughs> you know you have to help your plate with peas or any other kind of vegetable. That's the way it's gonna be now, everybody together. Lunch counters, restrooms, drinking fountains too. I wiggle in my chair like a doodle bug. I got to be excused, I shout, and I run into the kitchen to tell John Henry. I guess he was really excited to tell him maybe he could go swimming with him at the pool. That would be great. I'm gonna swim in the town pool, he hollers. Is it deep? Real deep, I tell him. And the water's so clear, you could jump to the bottom and open your eyes and still see. Let's be the first ones there, said John Henry. I'll bring my good luck nickel and we could die for it. They look so excited. Oh, I don't know about you, but I spent the majority of my childhood at the summer in our town pool, learning how to swim and then swimming and having fun with my friends, playing cards, playing other games, and then jumping right back in the pool. Next morning, as soon as the sun peeks into the sky, here comes my friend, John Henry Waddle. Run, run, running to meet me. It might be Waddell, I don't know. Waddle, Waddell, tomato, tomato. Let's go, he yells, I got my nickel. And I run right with him all the way to the town swimming pool. We race each other over the last hill and we stop. I wonder why. County dump trucks are here. They grind and back up to an empty pool. Workers rake steaming asphalt into the hole where sparkling clean water used to be. One of them is John Henry's big brother, Will Rogers. We start to call to him, what happened? But he sees us first and he points down the road and he says, get on home. What happened to the pool? Hmm. 
I put asphalt in my pool. But our feet stuck and we can't budge, so we hunker in the tall weeds and watch all morning until the pool is filled with hot, spongy tar. Smoky steam rises in the air. Workers tie planks to their shoes and stomp on the blacktop to make it smooth. Will Rogers heaves his shovel into the back of an empty truck and climbs up with other workers. His face is like a storm cloud, and I know this job has made him angry. Let's go, a boss man shouts, and the trucks rumble down the road. Why did they fill up the pool? It's so quiet now, we can hear the breeze whisper through the grass. We sit on the diving board and stare at the tops of the silver ladders sticking up from the tar. My heart beats hard in my chest. John Henry's voice shakes. White folks don't want colored folks in their pool. You're wrong, John Henry, I say, but I know he's right. Let's go back to Fiddler's Creek. I don't want to swim in this old pool anyway. But we know they really did. John Henry really wanted to swim in that pool. John Henry's eyes fill up with angry tears. I did, I did want to swim in this pool. I want to do everything you can do. I don't know what to say, but as we walk back to town, my head starts to pop with new ideas. I want to go to the dairy dip with John Henry and sit down and share root beer floats. I want to go to the picture show and buy popcorn and watch the movie together. I want to see this town with John Henry's eyes. We stop in front of Mr. Mason's store. I jam my hands into my pockets while my mind searches for words to put with my new ideas. My fingers close around two nickels. Do you want to get an ice pop? John Henry wipes his eyes and takes a breath. I want to pick it out myself. I swallow hard and my heart says yes. Let's do that. I give John Henry one of my nickels and he shakes his head. I got my own and we look at each other. and then we walk through the front door together. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you gonna do except keep on thinking about equality and freedom and making friends with anybody you want to and standing up for them when things are unfair, right? It's very important. Hello, welcome to Crafting with Miss Adaria. My name is Bunny. Look how pretty I am. I'm kind of multicolored. Oh, actually my name is Springy. <laughs> Springy is here to welcome you to Crafting today and we really hope you enjoyed your story about friends and sticking up for your friends and the problems some people have because of the color of their skin. What a strange world, but that's okay. Just love everybody and everything will be fine. Yay, everything will be fine. <laughs> so today we're gonna make a bunny, yay! Maybe a little bit because uh, some of us celebrate Easter and maybe a little bit because bunnies remind me of springtime um, and all the fun that comes with flowers and plants and seeing everything bloom again. Hooray! I was born in spring, so that might have something to do with it, but you never know. So today we're gonna make a bunny, and yes, you guessed it, out of your favorite component, the toilet paper roll. I, I saw this craft book uh, the other day and it, it actually said it had a picture of a toilet paper roll on the cover with a, a speech bubble and, the, and the inside the bubble it said, I am not a toilet paper roll. <laughs> so I guess it was having some sort of identity crisis, but I think that uh, there are so many things that you can make with these toilet paper rolls. For instance, do you remember when we made this lovely bee? 
I remember. I think it was great. I really liked being made into existence. Thank you, Miss Adoria. Well, you're welcome, Mr. B or Ms. B. So today we're going to make a bunny. What? That's right. So we hope you are going to enjoy. And the first thing that we're going to do is, see we have our bunny colors? Our bunny is going to be white with pink ears and a pink nose. How do you feel about that? Well, I am purple with kind of like tan features and a pink nose, but I can see a white bunny. So yeah, so Springy says so we're going to go for it. So once again, I am going to wrap up the toilet paper roll. Oh, I am not a toilet paper roll. I'm going to wrap up this cylindrical tube with some white paper. And we're going to make that go around so it fits. And then I'm just going to give it a little snip snip. Remembering to leave a little bit extra so we can glue it to itself. We also have a lovely cotton ball, and I have some pink felt. I'm not quite sure if I'm gonna use pink felt or pink paper, but as we go along, I will decide. Right, okay, so now I need to snip up the side so that we can enclose this. Okay, now I got it started. I can eyeball the rest. Just do it carefully so it comes out even. All right, we'll save that scrap for another day for another cylindrical tube. <laughs> and I'm just going to do a measurement to make sure that it's okay before I put the glue on because you want to measure 500 times and then cut once or glue once. And that is looking good. I have enough space left over. Okay. It's just a little bit off on the top, so let me just snip that. Snip that in the bud. Okay. okay. Now we could get to gluing. And once again, I'm going to put some glue, our trusty glue stick, on the bottom. Come back here on the bottom and on the opposite side of the top. Here, let's do it on the toilet paper roll so I don't fold the paper. Okay, that looks good. My glue stick is coming apart from itself, but it's okay because we're almost done with it. Okay, now we can roll it all up into a fun little bunny body. Make sure it's even. Roll it up. Roll it up. Make sure it's tight together so there's not a big gap. And then smooth it out. I put my fingers inside and outside, and we're smoothing that bunny body out. Okay, that looks good. That looks like it's gonna stay for a little while. Look at that, you've got your bunny body. So what's next? What should we do next? Do you want to make the ears? Oh, I think that's a great idea. So we're gonna go back to our paper here and I'm going to cut out some ear shapes. So I'm going to start like that and just sort of make a shape that looks like that. Are those ears too big for this bunny? 
I don't know. Just trying to see here. See ear. <laughs> I just made a two senses joke, man. I don't know if I like that. Maybe at an angle. See, the things that I, I was looking at online, they were having the bunny's ears on the inside. Yeah, maybe that's, maybe that's good, but it needs to be a little smaller, I think. So I'm just gonna trim it up on the bottom and make it a little bit smaller. I know bunny's ears are pretty big though, right? Do you know why a bunny's ears are so big? The better to hear you with, my dear. Yes, that's right. Because a bunny is on the menu for a lot of different creatures for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And the bunnies really have to hear things so they can escape, especially when they're out and about eating grass and other things like clover and sorrel and other plants because they are vegetable eaters. They live on green plants and probably some fruits if they can find them too and vegetables. So they need to be able to hear their prey coming for them and so the their enormous ears help them hear. Imagine if you had ears that big. I mean, look how big this bunny's ears are compared to its eye or its nose or even its head. That's a big, big ear. And it funnels that sound right down so they can hear. I'm not quite sure how their eyesight is, but they also use their whiskers to feel. They feel vibration and they also feel different temperature changes and they feel things, you know, if they're, if they're grazing and there's a tree, oh, they feel that, you know. But they mostly rely on their sense of hearing and that's why their ears are so big. And that's why they have such strong and powerful legs too because they can run really fast if something's wrong and they need to get away. They are expert runners. And that's why they were given big, giant, muscular legs so they can scoot away when they need to. So I'm going to put a little bit of pink on the inside of both of these ears. And I'm going to do that by using this piece of pink paper. So first I'm going to cut out a square, a rectangle rather. And I'm just gonna see, yeah, that's about how big I want that to be. And I'm gonna do the same shape as this, but smaller. So we're gonna come in and just do basically the same shape, but smaller, and see how that looks? It fits right in there, doesn't it? I think that looks good, don't you? Oh, I really like that a lot. So let's just go back and measure that and we can cut right around it because Miss Adaria forgot to bring a pencil, kids. What? What? It just escaped my list of things to bring to the crafty time. But we can always improvise. So look at that. Look how cute that is. Isn't that cute? So now we're going to glue our ear, inside of our ear, to the bigger part of the ear. And that's going to look really cute. Leave a little bit of space on the bottom, because that's where you're going to attach it to the toilet paper. I mean the cylindrical tube. <laughs> I'm still not a toilet paper roll. Sorry, Mr. Non-Toilet Paper Roll. And I'm gonna glue this one too. Oops, let's do it on here, just to be safe. So I have a feeling this one's gonna get a little messy. All right. I just said all right again. Okay. There she is, kids. 
and grown-ups and whoever else is watching this. I think I got a little bit of glue on here, but uh, well, you know. We all have a little bit of imperfection, so so will our bunny. So I think I'm going to put our bunny ears in the inside. I like that, don't you? Yeah, I think that's really cute. But I'm not going to do it with glue stick. You know why? Because I don't think it's going to stick. So I'm going to go for my old standby, Mr. Tape. And we're just going to tape these little ears right in here. Maybe put it down a little bit since the tape will hold it. And you don't have to see the bottom. So there's one of the ears. And I'm trying to keep it, keep the seam for the paper roll in the back. So you want to space your ears out so that they're even. Okay, here's another bunny ear. Bunny ear placement service. Just call 1-800-BUNNY-EAR. <laughs> you could throw money. Throw money at us and we'll find your bunny. We'll locate your bunny ear on the cylindrical tube. That's right. Look at this bunny. You can even, you know, sometimes they have bent ears a little bit. Well, I don't know, but sometimes I've seen people make bunnies with floppy ears. But I think our ears are just going to stick up so that the bunny can hear what's coming. Just making sure that... Uh, it's all smooth in there. Oh, he's such a cute bunny. Now, how about a bunny nose? What do you think? Would you rather have a felt bunny nose or a matching bunny nose? Felt, matchy. I think we're gonna go for matchy. Matchy, matchy, matchy little nose. And for this one, I'm going to make a triangle. Yep, that's right. I said it. And I meant it. A little triangle. Oh no, the cuteness is just overpowering me. And we're gonna glue this little triangle nose right into our bunny face. Look at my little bunny nose. Okay. Oh my goodness. What a cute little bunny nose that is. Hello, bunny nose. Yeah, woohoo! You're almost together, bunny. And how about a little bunny tail? Would you like that? Maybe we'll put it on the side a little bit so you could see it. Don't you think that's cute? Now, because we don't have time to hold the glue. We're gonna use a little bit of tape to hold on the bunny tail, but normally I would use glue and just hold it, but I don't think it's gonna stay. So we're gonna cheat a little and put a cute little bunny tail over there. Look at that little bunny tail. Oh, it's so cute. And have I said the word cute enough during the story time? I don't think so. Because we're going to do some cute little whiskers and a cute mouth. It's a cute little mouth. We're going to do some whiskers. Whiskers. Cute little bunny whiskers. Maybe make them a little bit longer. And your bunny is almost ready. What else does a bunny need? What don't you see on this bunny face? It rhymes with pies. That's right, a bunny pair of bunny eyes. So here, let's make our bunny eyes. It's our bunny eye. We can make our bunny looking over that way. How's that look? 
Bunny eye, bunny eye, little, little bunny eye. One of them is bigger. That's okay. So there is your cute little bunny. I hope everybody has a happy Easter if you celebrate that. And if you don't, that's okay. Hope you have a happy whatever you celebrate. I think that's wonderful. And I just like Easter because I usually get a giant basket of candy. And it's usually close to my birthday. So then I have birthday presents before or after. So happy spring, everybody. Every bunny. We hope you enjoyed this wonderful craft. Thank you so much for tuning in to Miss Adoria Storytime and Craft. Please come back next time and we'll have something exciting and fun. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and have a wonderful day. Thank you. A bee and a bunny. Ooh, we're so happy.